Open gaming is open culture. Gaming is part of our culture, and culture conceptually is an organic process. It's the way a society develops and grows from one person to another. It's about the interactions and the ideas that people share. This is how it's been since the beginning of, of history, and it's a modern misconception that culture wouldn't be free and open by default. But the corporate world doesn't operate on handshake agreements and nods and winks. The Open Gaming License 1.0a has served the tabletop role-playing community for 20 years now, but recently Wizards of the Coast has hinted that they intend to assert their ownership of the text of that license by declaring it, quote, unauthorized, unquote, whatever that means. One thing that's evident is, despite the goodwill they've earned during their 5e work, the latest iteration of Wizards of the Coast is not your gaming buddy. Luckily, there are other open licenses out there, and I've got extensive experience with two of them, which I'll discuss in this video. Now, warning, I am not a lawyer, I've never been to court over licensing, so don't take my thoughts on licensing as legal advice. I'm just a guy working in the film and software industries, so I'm giving my thoughts based on experiences of both myself and people that I know in those businesses. Before getting to licenses, consider the meaning of copyright. Copyright is the right to copy. In, in many countries, copyright is an innate trait you get whenever you create something. When you create a thing, you have copyright over it. You created something, it's yours. Copyright is not a license. Copyright essentially says nobody but you has the right to the content you've created. Obviously, in real life, we don't live by that rule because we do things like make YouTube videos and put them on the internet. And it's because we're human and we like to share the stuff we create that we invented licenses. A license helps you as a content creator explain why and in what way you're sharing your content. In other words, a license sits on top of copyright, adding terms and conditions to your innate right to your own content. 1. Creative Commons. The Creative Commons license is an irrevocable and modular license. It recognizes that not all content creators or projects need the exact same protections. There are five different components you can choose between when declaring a Creative Commons license. Attribution, or buy. Others can use your content as long as they give you credit. Share alike, SA. Others can use your content as long as the content they create with it can also be used by others. This was largely the stipulation of the Open Gaming License 1.0a, and it enables people to build upon each other's work, while preventing anyone from grabbing the content that people have made and making it inaccessible. Non-commercial, NC. Others can use your content, but they may not make money off of it. No derivative, ND. Others can use your content, but they may not change it in any way. And zero. Others can use your content in literally whatever way they want. The nonprofit organization that manages Creative Commons has a great license chooser at creativecommons.org slash choose. Unlike the open gaming license, the text of a Creative Commons license is itself licensed under the Creative Commons Zero License, which means that even if the organization tried to unauthorize, quote-unquote, the Creative Commons License, you could legally copy and paste the exact text of the license into your own document, give it a new title, and continue using it exactly as it is. By contrast, the text of the Open Gaming License is copyright by Wizards of the Coast. You don't own the Open Gaming License you do own the Creative Commons license. To use the Creative Commons license, step through the license chooser, scroll down to the Have a Web Page section, and select and copy the licensing statement. For example, this work is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 4.0 International License. Paste that statement near the copyright statement of your work, and you've just licensed your content. How to mimic the open game license. 
1.0a. The closest thing to Open Gaming License 1.0a is a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike, or CC by SA, which stipulates that other people can use your work as long as they credit you and share their work as you have shared your work. The one significant difference is that there's no concept of product identity in the Creative Commons license. However, as the copyright holder of anything you create, you are permitted to qualify how a license does and does not apply to your work. For instance, say you've created an RPG product that takes place on the planet Kana, created by the goddess Chusra, and that features a powerful magical spell called Inazdrith's Bombastic Bubble. You're happy for people to use the game rules you've created, but you have big ideas for how the world is going to develop, so you don't want to give up control of those story elements. So in your licensing section, you could write, with the exception of place names and the names of gods, you may use this book's contents under the terms of the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 4.0 International License. That means I could write a book compatible with your game, and I could even use the spell name in Asdrith's Bombastic Bubble in my material. However, I could not use the world Kana or its creator goddess Chuja. You can restrict or unrestrict as much of your material as you want. Maybe you don't want people using the spell name for some reason. In that case, write something like this. With the exception of place names, the names of gods, or spell names, you may use this book's contents under the terms of the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 4.0 International License. The important thing is to be clear in your declaration. Don't use vague terminology like the names of any of the important gods, but minor ones are okay. That wouldn't be good. Just follow the example of product identity definitions that publishers have used for the open gaming license. Or for maximum clarity, just publish a system reference document in which everything can be used under the Creative Commons license, and then reserve all the special names and cool fiction for commercial versions. 2. The GNU Free Documentation License The GNU Free Documentation's license, and yes, that is a hard G, comes from the world of technical documentation for, like, software manuals. Game rules are essentially the code of a game written in natural language, so there's more in common here than you might first think. The GNU Free Documentation License is quite a modern license, and it acknowledges that many documents exist only online as, as wiki pages, or that they might be also licensed under a Creative Commons license. It's also got provisions for the differences between making a personal copy of a book and then printing like a hundred copies of the book for sale. The 90s RPG Dead Earth actually was published using the GNU free documentation license, so using this license for tabletop RPG isn't without precedence. To my knowledge, I don't know that it's ever been to court for any reason, but other licenses by the nonprofit GNU Foundation have widely and successfully been defended in court, so it's got a pretty good pedigree. In fact, there are two well-respected publishing companies within the software industry that publish all of their books under the GNU Free Documentation License. As with Creative Commons, there's no concept of product identity in the GNU Free Documentation License. However, you could publish a system reference document that omits all the proper nouns and fictional elements that you didn't want other people to use. To use the GNU Free Documentation License, uh, visit gnu.org slash licenses slash fdl-1.3.3. TXT. Copy that text and paste the license into your book somewhere. Licenses to avoid. Again, I'm not a lawyer, so this is just based on experience, but the two licenses to avoid aren't really licenses at all. Don't release your work to the public domain. The public domain sounds great, but in most legal jurisdictions, apparently, it's not actually defined. It's an adjective, sort of, not really a noun. When you say your work is in the public domain in the U.S., that means you've relinquished any option to govern the future of that work. A company like Hasbro, let's say, just randomly, could grab a copy of your work, claim ownership of their copy of your work, and then make billions of dollars without so much as even crediting you. Also, don't not license your work. Saying that you don't want to bother with licensing is cool until it's not. The modern world is still coming to grips with what copyright means in the digital space. Clarity is essential not only to protect yourself, but to protect the people you want to be able to benefit from your hard work. Yeah, today it's cool for your friends to use your work, but what about when somebody takes their copy of that work, declares ownership of it, and hires a lawyer to sue you or one of your friends for using quote-unquote their content? It helps to view the copyright system as a mini-game. There are rules, whether you like it or not, and there are people and companies out there whose nature it is to 
test the boundaries of those rules. It's just like in your weekly RPG game. You tell players it's against the rules of your world for them to climb the god spire and claim divinity for themselves. So what's the first thing that they do? They spend the next six months trying to climb the god spire. License your work, keep it independent, keep it open. Thanks for watching.